In this video, we're going to discuss how to make the best cloud architecture and enterprise architecture decisions. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect with about 25 years experience in cloud architecture, enterprise architecture, network architecture, and security architecture. And today's video, we're gonna talk about making better decisions and your cloud architecture and enterprise architecture. And uh, the reason we have to talk about decision-making and cloud architecture is that in any architectural environment, there's never gonna be a perfect solution. It's just not going to happen. There's always gonna be some type of a trade-off. And whether it's any process that we choose to think about or any type of technology we choose to think about, there will always be a strength and a weakness of every solution we come up with. So that the key to a really great cloud architecture or enterprise architecture is not about picking the coolest technology or the best technology. It's about aligning the people, processes, and technology in the organization. It's about picking a technology strategy that's gonna most closely align with the organization's goals. That's the secret to making good architectural decisions. And that's what we're gonna talk about. How to evaluate architecture trade-offs in cloud architecture and enterprise architecture. So the first thing we're gonna talk about in order to do this and to make good business decisions is to clarify the business objectives. Now you would think this goes without saying, but 70 plus percent of all cloud architectures and most technology architectures in general provide zero, I said it, zero business value. That means they hurt the end business because they take resources out of the company that could be used for something else and give the company nothing. So the first thing we need to think about when evaluating trade-offs is how do they align with the organization's strategic goals? If an organization is trying to get faster and the technology can't help the organization get faster and that's their main goal, don't use it. No matter how cool it is, it's not gonna help. So we need to understand what we're trying to do. Or are we trying to be more agile? Or are we trying to reduce cost? Or are we trying to be the fastest or the best? Or are we trying to create a new architecture for regulatory compliance purposes? Whatever it needs, we need to make decisions. And we need to evaluate them. Because if we're optimizing cost, chances are we're not gonna get the greatest performance. So we have to evaluate these types of trade-offs. So well, the first thing we need to do is uh, rank any architectural options we have. And we need to rank them in terms of adherence to the business goals. So one thing might be a 10 out of 10 on the business goals, and another thing might be a six out of 10 towards meeting the business goals. But we have to rank them. That's really gonna be the first step. Anytime is look at our options and figure out what's best for us. Now, typically speaking, you know, I hate the expression because I love cats, but there's more than one way to skin a cat. So we typically have to identify alternative solutions. Maybe there's a different architectural pattern we could choose. Maybe there's a different technology we could choose. Maybe there's a different framework that would be better to our business. So here's where we're looking at our alternatives. And because, you know, we're looking at alternatives, we have to evaluate what's good about them. Now, personally, I like to use a SWOT analysis, you know, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threat uh, analysis they typically teach in MBA programs, and they typically use in the business world. And here's the reason I typically want to create some type of a SWOT analysis of all the alternative solutions. I can take that to the organization stakeholders, which often are very familiar with how to use a SWOT analysis. So that's typically what I would do here. I would look at the alternatives and I look at all their strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats and how they would, that would relate to the business. Now, the next thing I really need to think about is what is that organization trying to deal with or trying to achieve? Uh, are they trying to uh, change their capital structure? Is it an organization that's got a lot of debt on the books that wants to get rid of some of the debt and then use a, a lease, for example, which would make it go from CapEx to OpEx? Or do they want to migrate to the cloud because their capital structure needs them to free up capital and they'd prefer to move to an OpEx environment, what have you? So the first thing we need to figure out is what's best for the organization's capital structure. Then we need to think about performance, right? 
because whether it's going to be latency throughput scalability, that's going to have a big impact on many parts of our actual system and the choices we need. Then we need to think about the security and compliance. You know, uh, what's the risk? What's the exposure? Where's the data? What are the requirements? Those kind of things. We need to think about that in the constants of everything. And typically, we need to think about the maintainability of the solution. Look. As cloud architects and enterprise architects, we're not going to build it, but somebody's going to have to build this and maintain it. So we need to make sure they can manage it and that it's not too operationally complex and that there's a reasonable support model and things that are there to make that happen. And there's even tools to enable the people to manage it. We might be looking for time to market and maybe time to market demands a cloud computing environment that might cost three times more than the data center environment. But if time to market is the thing that matters, maybe that's a trade worth making. We need to think about the flexibility of any architecture. For example, is it flexible and enables easy changes? Is it optimized for what we need to do? And we always need to think about it. So, you know, as we started going through, we were looking at the business objectives and then we were looking at alternative solutions and now we're really, really defining our evaluation criteria. Now, once we start going here, now we're in a much better position to really think about our decisions. We can start quantifying impacts. We can create ROI projections and total cost of ownership models. And that way we've got a financial numbers, uh, numbers where we can do an apples to apples comparison between different architectural choices. Now, the next thing we need to do is once we've got our thoughts and we've got this is really about meeting with stakeholders and giving them the chance to say, I like this. I don't like this. This is going to help me more than this. Because that then puts us in the position to be going back, we've done the analysis, we've done our planning, and now we're getting feedback on it from the people that know the company the best. Now, at this time, we, we can look through various scenarios and simulate a best case scenario, a worst case scenario, how it most likely will be used, the effectiveness, and that's really what goes into it. So once we've got all of that, now we've got some decisions to make. We can assess risk, we can assess mitigations, we can assess which technology or solution gets us closer to the goals, closer to the strategic initiatives. Now we think we've got a solution. Now at this point, we might bring in a proof of concept. Now here as a cloud architect or an enterprise architect, we're gonna lean out, lead this proof of concept, we're gonna design the proof of concept, design success criteria, what have you, and then bring in some engineers to build it, and then we will measure it. We'll measure the performance, the integration effort, get user feedback and see if it did what was designed. And then at that point that we need to start thinking about if it's right for the business and then figuring out how to get the culture to change, what have you. But that's how you make architectural decisions. Notice not an easy process. We really have to evaluate everything going back to the business, uh, going back to the goals, going back to the alternative solutions and what they can each do compared to each other, the strengths and weaknesses of every possible choice, the impact to the business, uh, the stakeholder feedback stage for the most part, and then the proof of concept and then tuning to make it best for the client. This is how you make better decisions in cloud architecture and enterprise architecture. Now, if you'd like to become a cloud architect, an enterprise architect, a security architect, an AI architect, or a network architect, join us on a free architecture webinar. We hold one free every week, and the link is in the description of this video. Sign up for one of these webinars, and we'll talk about what we do as architects, the skill you need in these careers, and how to go get them. And then we'll answer any of your questions live and free on Zoom. And that's in the description of this video. Also in the description of this video are guides on how to become a cloud architect or how to become an AI architect or guides on how to become a security architect or an enterprise architect and many other things. And they're all free in the description of this video. So check them out, sign up for some and get them emailed to you. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to help you in your cloud architect career, enterprise architect career, security architect career, AI architect career, or any other architecture career. This is Mike Gibson. I'll see you soon.